Nous allons parler un petit peu plus en détail. And I'm going to uh, look at microbial life more in detail and changes that take place in microbial life due to human activity. There are some uh, phrases which I listed on the slide: uh, microbial life, uh, life beneath our feet, the earth is dark matter, the unseen majority. Les microorganismes may be uh, out of sight, but we cannot afford for them to be out of our minds. These are phrases which all underline the microbial life, life that we don't see with our naked eyes and for which we need microscopes to visualize it. But physicians, when they don't see microbes, are worried about them when they have to treat sick people. In one ton of earth, there are 10 to the power of 13 or even 15 bacteria, meaning that um, across the world, there's a huge number of uh, bacteria in the soil. The bacteria playing a beneficial but also detrimental role on human health have an origin, and the origin is the soil, the ground. But the connection between the two has not yet been established. Established, people tend to forget about this matter. It's almost considered as taboo. And the topic is not so difficult because uh, we have to look at bacteria under a microscope, but because there are abiotic uh, marine or terrestrial bacteria, the biotic bacteria are the ones with which we evolve together, us or our dogs or our cats, or species, animal species have a, a bacterial species microbial species uh, evolving with them, but also biodiversity of uh, bacteria and viruses is much more complex than that of uh, animals and plants. We have reason to believe that biodiversity is changing. There is not necessarily a gain or a loss or both. The main reason is that new bacteria have appeared due to resistances developing in existing species and creating new species, resistance to herbicides, to antibiotics, uh, resistance to antibiotics has been well documented, but also resistance to Marseille soap or to chlorine. Bacteria have the capacity to resist just about anything. As soon as they are being attacked, they mutate a new species, species appear. Some species have almost disappeared. Helicobacter pylori, the bacteria which are naturally present in our stomach, uh, are disappearing in many people. And fortunately, because uh, this bacterium causes uh, ulcers, uh, stomach ulcers, and up to a certain extent, stomach cancer. Changes in uh, lifestyle, uh, eating habits, the number of C-sections also changes the uh, number of bacteria we live with. C-sections are performed much more frequently to deliver babies, and uh, the babies being born no longer come in contact with the bacteria contained in the mother's uh, vagina. And therefore, the child is born much more sterile than it should be. Reduction of some uh, category of bacteria is also interesting. INRA has uh, carried out a very nice uh, work published in Nature, according to which some bacteria tends to disappear in obesity, and there are many other factors. Bacterial diversity and viral diversity has been affected by human activity. We have medical reasons to believe that uh, biodiversity has been modified. The appearance of new infections, uh, we see this every five or ten years. The appearance of new, the emergence of new infections is not necessarily due to uh, global warming, but rather to the multiplication of transportation, the, the ease with which we travel from one continent to another. And there is also another Hypothesis, the hygienic hypothesis connecting the increase of immune and autoimmune and allergic uh, diseases such as uh, Crohn's disease or asthma with the decrease of infections. We will discuss this later in more detail. Now, one of the major problems is 
the following. What exactly is a bacterial species? Morphological criteria are not very accurate, uh, they're not very useful, but there are genetic criteria. We now know how to classify bacterial species thanks to genetic criteria. But for microbiological purposes, what matters really are the functional criteria. They are essential. For instance, some uh, there are some denitrifying bacteria which remove the nitrogen. There are bacteria producing CO2. And these classifications are difficult to uh, pinpoint, and usually they don't use genetic criteria. And this is something that is being currently worked on. We're going to solve the problem, but we have not. We're not there yet. In the field of microbial ecology, the unit is not so much the phylogenetic species in the normal meaning of phylogenetic for animals, but rather the function. In the event of an environmental attack, there are tables showing that the function of the community is resilient. It is resilient uh, in favor of a new species which uh, appears, and the species ensuring the function will disappear. The response will be made available by a quick and horizontal transfer of genes. Uh, horizontal means it's not the mother and the father, but the father alone who transfers his genes uh, to the offspring and not by marrying the mother. This is uh, an essential element in uh, functional recovery, the recovery of functions. The uh, functional destiny of a pathogen, pathogenic bacteria, bacterium, will be different according to the type of bacterial community it belongs to or it is introduced into. Experiences have been conducted on artificial colon. When location in which uh, the bacterium grows is changed, is changed, the function also changes. And this resilience explains uh, the exceptional longevity of uh, bacteria. Bacteria have been on Earth forever, ever since uh, life uh, was created three billion years ago, whereas multicellular beings uh, have only been in existence for 500 million years. The resilience is probably what explains uh, the importance of bacteria in terms of for public health purposes. The microbial, abiotic microbial world, the uh, microbial world which uh, cannot be found in our guts, but it can coexist with the roots, for instance, partly controls uh, CO2 release and other greenhouse effect gases. There is a balance between the synthesis uh, responsible for nitrogen fixation in sugars and breathing, which releases uh, CO2 in the atmosphere. Plants are the uh, source of energy that all living beings need. We live because of plants. We, can't, we don't live because of animals or thanks to animals, and animals live thanks of, to uh, plants. Bacteries in the soil by decomposing feces and dead bodies will generate also CO2, and this is what it calls heterotrophic breathing. Now, the contribution of the microbial world to the formation of the other two greenhouse effects, methane and uh, nitrogen compounds, uh, plays an important role. Methane can be synthesized by archaea. Archaea is, one of, is the third uh, kingdom of living beings, methanogenic, and uh, methane oxidation releases CO2. It's the, uh, the famous cow fart. And because we are eating more and more meat across the world, we are responsible for the release of more methane through farts emitted by cows, but also other sources as well. Methane produces CO2, but uh, nowadays it's also anthropogenic uh, due to uh, rice culture, for instance, or fossil fuels. N2O, nitric oxide, is another uh, greenhouse effect gas. The metabolism uh, is complex and includes the nitrogen fixation by bacteria, but the major part, the most part of the nitrogen comes from uh, nitrogen fertilizers. One of the three risk factors 
on Earth is, well, the first one is uh, global warming, changes in biodiversity, and the third is accumulation of nitrogen in the soil. Ever since we've been able to synthesize solid uh, nitrogen starting from uh, gaseous nitrogen, solid nitrogen has been accumulating in the soil, and this is something that people tend to forget, but it was recently uh, underlined by Mr. Rockstrom uh, in a famous paper for scientists. Uh, microbes are also sensitive to greenhouse effect gases and climatic changes interfering with bacteria are increased in CO2 release and external temperature. The climate is uh, modifying the bacterial community constantly. We don't know if it is uh, going to suppress bacterial community or induce them to a certain function, including those that have denitrifying function. CO2 uh, released by roots stimulates bacterial growth, it fixates nitrogen in the, in the soil, and it changes its chemistry. Mushrooms assimilated best, but in the soil, fungi, <coughs> mushrooms assimilate carbon better than bacteria do. Their membrane uh, resists uh, decomposition better than um, that of bacteria, and if a system is dominated by mushrooms, it doesn't breathe well and it sequesters, it traps more carbon. Everything depends on the plants uh, that are present. Because of all this, we know that temperature stimulates microbial activity. It also increases uh, microbe production uh, from CO2. And in the permafrost, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the soil that is permanently frozen in Canada or Siberia, this stabilizes carbon store, stores, and because we know that uh, this will change, the relationships are even more complex. I'm fully aware, when delivering this speech, that what I'm saying is, far, is very complex, but life is complex, and microbial life is, doesn't escape the rule. It's not simpler than that of multicellular species. It's simply not so well known, far less visible, and more difficult to study. The appearance of uh, new bacterial species, by chance or by necessity because of human activity, really is important because uh, human activity releases new uh, species of bacteria through natural selection mutations and uh, horizontal transfer of genes induced by new therapies, new drugs, or quite simply the uh, excessive use of pesticides and uh, cleaning products and disinfecting products. Uh, unfortunately, pesticides are used uh, in an excessive way without uh, thinking twice, uh, both in the environment and in the atmosphere. The last slide will be my conclusion. Human activity has generated the appearance of uh, many new bacteria. According to some uh, famous scientists, these bacteria are a threat, either because they are resistant to uh, treatments, antibiotic treatments, for instance. Uh, President Chirac uh, in France, when he was elected, said that this was going to be an important topic. And the uh, bacteria have an activity themselves, maybe not only to resist uh, treatment, but also there are desirable or undesired secondary uh, effects or adverse events. And these new species have uh, capacities to evolve which uh, are both unknown and dangerous. I'm talking about uh, bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics, uh, uh, the, use, the use for human uh, feeding and uh, all kinds of uh, cleansing, cleaning products uh, and chemicals, uh, disinfectants, uh, everything tends to uh, pollute our world, and uh, this, uh, I wanted to really uh, raise the alarm, and these were the most, uh, most important elements in my uh, speech.